Hello, we are here with Councillor Scotty Holmes and we are going to ask him a couple of questions regarding the self-inherit rights workshops coming up. So Scotty, with all the daily pressures in our people's lives, why is it important that they spend some time getting involved with inherit rights governance and what are some ways people can get involved to help out with self-government work? Oh, good question. Well, based on your own experiences, you know what those pressures are. Uh, <clears throat> you as people are, or we as people that go out and try to do what we supposed to be doing in our, our way, gets, gets um, stymied or stumped by colonial laws and things like that. So we have difficulties or challenges in, in implementing our ways. But today, that's changed. Uh, there's two things that, that help us change. Uh, one is federal government and the provincial government now have a declaration uh, of Indigenous Peoples Act in place, which their job is uh, the government needs to start uh, implementing our laws. And so there's been a lot of work done over the years uh, where our First Nations people have provided those, um, those needs that have to, to go into political systems. <clears throat> and what we're talking about is our laws uh, being aligned with their laws. That means that our laws <clears throat> will be just as important as their laws. If we get those two integrated, then we as a people, as Upper Nukla people, or scaled as a nation, will, will be able to have full jurisdiction and authority to make the decisions in how our resources are used, <clears throat> or how does that stop uh, your actual use of your whatever you do, picking berries or hunting or whatever those are. So that's that's why this this uh, process right now we're doing is important because it gives you an idea. Uh, it it, it kind of re visits the areas that you're saying that you have struggles with out there and how this changeover will help better that. And so it's going to take a, a while for us to get us collectively at the same page. But the processes uh, that are done by Sad San and, and uh, our community here is, um, is important to all of us to participate because it gives you a better understanding of the process of change. And um, many people do have some, some apprehensions about change, but here this process is gonna help maybe minimize or, or diminish that uh, apprehension that we have or fear of change. So if you do this process, uh, you get opportunities to ask questions, or you get opportunities to see different, different aspects of laws and different aspects of, of uh, processes that are happening in government. So that's one process that's happening right now. But on the other hand, uh, in the in the uh, political world, uh, chief and councils all over the province has uh, put their emphasis not just on title and rights, but how do we get our land back? So if we're talking about title and rights, we're now understanding is that, well, we don't have any title and rights if we don't have land. It's common sense. So now there's a whole push across the province to find a way how we can ensure that government sits down with us and uh, talk about the restitution of land. Commonage is one of the examples of how we're doing that. Uh, <clears throat> right now, we're, we're dealing with 
probably three levels of government, actually. We're not only dealing with our own governance here at Upper Nicola, and how we look at the commonage issue, but it's also been looked at in the, in the internet, or sorry, the uh, federal and provincial level. That's the second part. But now what we've done is uh, we've included it to United Nations level. And so what that does, it gives you three assurances that this uh, restitution of land or return of the land to us isn't going to just tie you off. Because we've been dealing with the common age now for since 1993, and we still haven't resolved that. So something wrong with the system, and so we looked at what's wrong with the system. And so the system that we're looking at is peer domination, peer denial of your rights, and peer pressure on possession of, of your lands and resources. And so now we've got the tools, not that we didn't, but we are better equipped with the tools that we've had and by the practices that you have out there, when you go out and pick berries and when you go out and hunt, when you go out and fish, you are practicing that title and right. That also tells us, in terms of your thinking about title, when you go out and practice that, we refer that to occupation and use. How can you pay occupation and use when you talk to that at the government level is title. It means land tenure. So that's how we're trying to get this 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 practice back in. So once we've got this uh, process in place, everybody's on the right page and everybody's looking at that self-government, by the time you get there you'll know pretty much what your self-government is. What it really is, is what you've been saying all along. Uh, and now uh, it just becomes where we're, where we're at now is bringing us all to the same level of that understanding. Most times what we do is we get in ourselves involved with, with a mix-up of uh, understandings between our laws in colonial laws, which basically the center of all of that is the Indian Act. And uh, I'm not going to go into the Indian Act, but the Indian Act is the only act put in place that separates us from our land. And when you look at the depth of that, that's what it was all about. How do you alienate the owners away from their land? And that was one of the ways the first a piece of act that was put in place in the 1800s, 1867. And so when you really look at that, and the only thing that I would mention to that, what really identifies that, that the alienation of land is when you look at 18.1 of the Indian Act, and that talks about the reserves. Well, when you look at that, and you compare that to the history that we've kind of gone through in, in uh, common age, that alienation is always there. And so these acts that are put into place was that way they did it. And so now what they claim and what we've been arguing over since contact is the land question. So that goes back to that. So you hear about uh, the memorials of 19, 10 and 1911. Well, that was the first real big major push by the alliance of people in the, in the province to demand some issue and discussion about who owns the land. And uh, so, of course, you always hear uh, since time immemorial, or we have never ceded our lands. Well, this is what this is all about. And so we're at the point right now, if we continue with this process, complete this process, we are going to be in a better position to ensure that our laws, our practices, our traditions, our spiritualities are all going to be uh, recognized in its true sense. And you will have 
the priority decision to make how that works or change. Right now you don't have that. If you do, it's very limited. So now this process is trying to ex escalate that authority and jurisdiction you have uh, into a better level. So when we get to that part, the sooner we get to that part, the sooner we're going to be a third level of government in this country. So you've got two governments right now, provincial, federal government, and we're on a sort of kind of a halfway point to that. Or maybe we're further than that. But it really it depends on us and how we want to get there. So what, what does it do for you? It basically comes down to the point you are now really self-determining what you want to do. You are creating your own process, your own government, your own styles, all styles of government, own styles of government to be what you always said you were. But in reality, it'll be there. So that's kind of what this process will do. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's important that everybody gets involved. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process where you can get involved at any level that you see you are uh, wishing to be participant in. So for like me, I'm more involved in the government, the government areas. I've been involved in these other areas where we have committees and we've had uh, meetings uh, all along. Now, my position is to deal with this law to law aspect because that's what government to government is. And so what we're saying now is that, and again, Bill C-31 and C-15, these two acts that the government's put into place put space in that legislation for us to make sure our laws, our practice and things are respected and implemented into the process. So that's the bottom line. So the bottom line is that now you don't have to depend on or go through the process of uh, Indian, uh, Indian Act policies, which diminishes or weakens well, how we work with one another. In fact, the, the um, Indian Act itself and others are specifically put there to, to divide us. And we are in a major divide, and we need to mend that. So what will happen is if you go through the process, you will find that we'll quickly start mending those uh, divides that we have for whatever reasons they may be. And when we get to that point, uh, we'll be like what our Chuck Pierce says. We all are connected. Whatever we do, whatever our laws, or whatever processes we use, there's a connection to, to our life to that. So that's what this is in. It's part of the Chip Two principle, un unity. You, you know, and that's a generational uh, practice. And if it's a generational practice, then what that is, it's our law. The same with what we say when we're talking about our Chip Two stories. Those are knowledges handed down after, handed down. But when you take a look at that, that knowledge, that traditional knowledge that's been handed down for generation chip, that is also, knowledge is our law. So that's a different concept than what Shema law talks about. And so what we're saying is we're trying to mesh those two. We need to educate the colonial governments because they don't understand us. We understand them, but they don't understand our laws in our practice or now in the, in the connections and all the strands that come to that. So that's why this process is, is there. We've been saying this all the time. Now we're just putting it into maybe the last phase of where we hope that we can collectively uh, as people, not only within community of Spokman, Koshana, but the whole nation. 
The whole nation is divided in the same way we look at how we are divided within our own communities, sometimes more even so in our own families. So there's a lot of things that you can see coming out of this. One, it's a healing process. If we unite ourselves together as families and, and communities and nation, that's a healing process all on its own. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's a benefit because each one of us in some way contributed to this process. Also contributed to the whole holistic approach of uh, healing. And when you continue to, do, continue to do that, at the end of the day, we're all involved in how do we find and practice and continue to use preventative measures uh, so that we don't fall back onto these, these divides. And uh, then we have a better strength to ensure that colonial governments and their process don't continue to, to uh, re can continuously re-establish uh, their colonialism practices, which is that conquer and divide. So at the end of the day, the simple fact is what was stolen from us, we want back in this process. It'll better do that. That's my story. Thank you so Wait. much.